Daniel? This is he. All right. Well, let me do the official introduction, ladies and gentlemen. We're very excited to welcome our next guest for this evening. He is a composer who has worked on such things as the hit TV series Dexter, and we're very excited to welcome Daniel Licht to the show. You're on the air live with Terry and Tiffany. Welcome. Uh, my pleasure to be here. We always love having composers on because I, I think you guys don't get exposed enough, and I, I think there should be like an international following, like basically a, a groupy group for composers. Because without composers, there's nothing, you know. Absolutely. Well, I mean, you know, I've got groupies. <laughs> well, well, I actually just occasionally, maybe once or twice in the last twenty <laughs> years. <laughs> well, being hooked to a show like Dexter, I would assume you would have groupies because that's a big show. <laughs> Yes, I do, but they're but they're mostly adolescent males. No, just kidding. <laughs> I gotta know what perks you get. I mean, please tell me they give you free showtime. Uh, no, no free, no free showtime actually. Wow, man, you need you need a new manager. <laughs> so, I when, guess so when when you got the job, now were you the the first composer on Dexter? I was the original composer on Dexter. Yeah, it's true. Uh, when they turned around and they told you what it was about, how did they describe it? Well, I actually saw uh, a video. They sent, I sent me a video of, tape of the pilot mm-hmm. uh, before I even before they even hired me. So I kind of knew what it was about. But um, I heard from my agent that uh, it was about the hero was a serial killer, and I thought, well, that sounds pretty interesting. How are they going to pull that off? So it piqued my curiosity. So when you turn around and you, you see a pilot, right then and there, do you get like ideas in your head about what the music should sound like? I mean, how does it come to you? Um, no, no, I wasn't. I mean, I had to think about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I had to go into for a meeting. I had to go and meet with the producers. So I really had to formulate what I thought was a good approach for for the show in order to get hired. So it's more. I tend to think about things over and over again. They don't always come right away. Sometimes when I sit at a piano, they might come. A theme might come right away. But generally, I tend to, to cogitate. Right. You know, think about things for as long as I have, and then, then come out with something. Then. Well, when you turn around, you decided what to do. I mean, uh, did your mind kind of go back to music you've seen in other serial killer movies, which really is kind of different because they've never really portrayed him as a hero before. But did you kind of like? Uh, think about things you heard before or, or did it come to you to, that it should be different because he's a hero yeah no I had I, I wanted to think of a, I wanted to come up with an a, original sound for that show because it it is such an original show mm-hmm. not that all shows shouldn't have an original sound but but yeah because you're you're basically sympathizing with a serial killer um, I wanted to find a sound that would work in one of the first kind of first approach that I, I came to was working with kind of hand drums, you know, like fast, uh, primitive sounding hand drums mm-hmm. and mixing that with softer, more emotional instruments like piano and harps and that sort of, and then maybe haunting voices you know, so you get the sympathetic part to right. uh, Dexter as a damaged person as a child you know a child he was damaged so you know so that that the, the interplay between his his you know primal drives and his you know emotion that's sort of what that's kind of what the approach i took that's exactly what i was getting at you totally answered my question because i would think with him being the basically the hero that uh you would have to draw on the old Kind of like, well, I refer to Frankenstein. Like he was a monster, but you got to feel sorry for him because he's damaged and he can't help it. his brain's messed up. So that, that helps with the music to get people to feel sorry for him. Yeah, absolutely. And then, and then another thing that I draw on is, um, well, because it takes place in Miami, I, um, you know, they wanted a Latin kind of a Spanish influence to it. Mm-hmm. And really, I thought of Dexter is is basically he's a vigilante. Right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If you think about it, he's like Dirty Harry. He's like, you know, mm-hmm. really like, he's, he's going, taking justice into his own hands. So I, I, add, I added some elements of, of kind of, you know, spaghetti western elements to it, almost. You know, Sergio Leone, any Morricone kind of sound, mm-hmm. you know, with the guitar, a little bit of that. Well, I think it's ingenious. Why. That's how I kind of formulate my decisions about what the instrumentation should be. It's, 
it's what is the story dictating, you know? Wow. Well, you know, the industry's changed so much. I mean, you used to think about, and I bring this up to every composer I have on, and we have quite a few on, and we always enjoy talking to them, that in the old days you get this visualization of seeing like an old uh, film from MGM where they were scoring a movie and they're all in the studio and there's the orchestra and they're showing the film up on the screen. But nowadays with computers and digital, a lot of them don't even do that. How do you do yours? Do you do yours kind of old school or are you all computer and technology? And I do it. I do mine with uh, with a computer. I do keep uh, a, a piece of paper nearby for sketching out themes, and because I started working in the old-fashioned paper style, mm -hmm. I've always had a computer, but um, um, but I keep paper nearby. I, I, it helps me to, to to formulate themes and sometimes to sketch out the whole direction of a theme. Mm -hmm. But I work with computers. I get a copy of it, and I. Um, but then I also go and record with string orchestras and. I play a lot of instruments myself, and sometimes I'll bring in some players, some percussion players, to my studio to do some overdubs. It's a real mixture. So, wow, and knowing, I was just laughing because I was thinking, and knowing that you play all the instruments and everything, you're kind of like Prince, huh? <laughs> <laughs> that's what he does, to where you can be your own band. I mean, that, that's got to be really helpful to you. What, what all instruments do you play? Well, I play guitar, I play bass, I play keyboards, I play some percussion. Um... That's basically it, you know, but lots of different, I have a lot of different instruments at, at my house. I've got xylophones, vibraphones, I can play some vibraphones, enough enough to record, you know, a part. Mm -hmm. You know, it was, it was interesting because you were talking about uh, feeling sympathy and, and uh, serial killers kind of being a hero. Uh, we had... Uh, Steve Rails back on who played Charles Manson uh, Charles Manson in the original Helter Skelter and I just now noticed you did like the remake of Helter Skelter but it says you're uncredited on that uh, the remake of Helter Skelter no okay we'll Don't see so. one more time we, go, we run into this in fact our, our guest that was on before you always talks about this how IMDB is, is sometimes wrong yeah it's on your IMDB that you did uh, Helter Skelter in 2012 huh well I'll have to look, look at that I don't I'll take credit for it. Maybe they use some of my music for it. Well, you probably but better check into it then. <laughs> <laughs> they might owe you yeah. some money. <laughs> exactly. Thank so, you for finding that. How different is it uh, scoring for a film versus a TV show? Because I know you've done a lot of work in film. Um, sorry, I'm just <laughs> I'm talking to you in a parking lot. And I, oh, that's I okay. I just heard the bang. I heard some bangs. So I just want to make sure it's not, you know, whatever. So wait, sorry, what was your question again? How different I'm is... I'm in my car, car and parking lot. That's, that, that's okay. How different is it scoring for a television show versus a film? Because I know you've done a lot of film. Well, um, you know, uh, it's uh, slightly uh, less uh, time for it. In general, although it changes, I mean... People can give you short schedules for anything, but the television show, you generally have to have scored an episode in, in less time than you do in a, in a film. Mm -hmm. um, but on the other hand, you, you, you know, after eight years of doing Dexter, I've de developed a lot of the themes. So I, I can score scenes faster because I, I'm not starting from, from, a, from zero, basically. Right. I don't, not, so um, in terms of films, uh, it's a more intense experience that you, you really got to throw yourself into it for a month or two and you have to live that film and you have very little time for anything else and you, then you finish the film and it's gone you know right well, how did you kind of get into composing? Because I know if people don't know, uh, you've had quite a, a career. And, I mean, you have worked a lot in the horror genre as well, even working on films like Amityville 1992 and Children of the Corn 2 and things like that. So how did you kind of get into not only this field, but also that particular genre? Well, actually, I think uh, I, I was friends with with Christopher Young, and I came out, and he kind of recommended me for my first film, which was a vampire film. Mm -hmm. And I think, you you know, once you do one thing, you you get pigeonholed into that mm -hmm. a little bit. Now, so I did a, a whole lot of horror and thriller films. Then I, I started getting into doing more dramatic films, and then I did one film for a producer 
that was that was for the Disney Disney Channel that was like a a kids scary film, and then he went on to do a bunch of comedy, and so I started working with him doing comedy uh, television shows, and as it turns out, I had gotten out of doing the horror, but. Because I'd been doing some of the comedy, I had some Latin music and some, some different kind of music. I think that helped me get the job for Dexter. Because Dexter takes place in Miami and it has, uh, you know, Latin music. And, and in a sense, it is it is a very dark comedy at times. Right. You know, you know, frequently it's a thriller, but sometimes it's just very dark, ironic comedy or humor. So. They've, they've got to have a sense so, of humor about themselves because I was just noticing when I was reading on the Internet Movie Database where I mentioned Helter Skelter, that was not referring to a Helter Skelter remake. That was the name of one of the Dexter episodes, and that's pretty funny if you think about it. Oh, right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they're, making, they're making <laughs> reference to uh, Charles Manson there in the show. That's, that's pretty funny. you talking about the vampire film. That was Children of the Night, right? That was Children of the Night, yeah. It was the first film I scored. I in, love that. In Los Angeles. That movie's awesome. You, you ever see the the full film? Have I seen it? Yeah. Well, I scored it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but with computers, you may not have to watch the movie anymore. I don't know how it's done. <laughs> I, uh, I, no, no, no. I watched the whole film. Yeah, I mean, is it, is it, I don't even is it even out in DVD? Can you see it? Uh, I think it is. I don't know. That was like it was in the eighties. You no, know, there's so it's many. A while yeah, ago. <laughs> there's so many things that's not on DVD. Uh, that that brings me to my, uh, brings me to my next question. You know, a lot of times, of course, you do movies that have soundtrack albums. Does Dexter have a soundtrack album that was released? Because some TV shows will if it has like a cult following. It certainly does. Oh no! Every every season the uh, soundtrack CD comes out. In fact, there's there's one coming out August twentieth for season seven. Mm. So uh, feel free to go out and purchase it. Anyone you can get it from Amazon. You can get it from iTunes. So you can get a, you can if you want a, a real CD, you can order that from Amazon, or if you want to download it, you can get it from iTunes or Amazon. But yeah, there's uh, seven so far, and there'll be eight. And we're probably going to do a box set for uh, you know when it's for, when it's all done. Wow! I did wrap it all up. Uh, I don't know if you know this, but I, I did my final scoring session last Thursday. Oh. Yeah. It was a thirty-piece string orchestra, so that was kind of fun. Oh, wow! So you're you're looking for a job then, basically? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Anyone out there looking for a job? Wow! You, you know it's interesting. I don't, Go I ahead. Don't do Windows though. Yeah, you said. No, you said. I didn't he, catch that. He doesn't right? do Windows. Oh, no. you don't do Windows. Okay, e- except for maybe on a computer. No, you probably use a Mac because all, all artists use Macs. Uh, you talked about uh, starting out in horror films and getting kind of typecast and stuff, but that's really kind of went full circle because now you've done some scores uh, of two movies. Uh, I mean, of a movie that was made into video games. You did two of them uh, based on the movie Silent Hill. Yeah. So tell I us. Have, yeah. Uh, actually, Silent the, the movie Silent Hill was based on the video game. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, oh, I didn't so know that. I, so Silent Hill was a video game first. Oh yeah, it's really, it's a really uh, has a cult following to it. Oh, see, that's not my yeah. world. I'm totally not into gaming, so I'm oblivious to that. Wow, I'm glad to know that. Yeah, and um, I was actually replacing the original composer for the Silent Hill, mm-hmm. and uh, a. He's extremely popular with, with the following. I mean, they, in fact, there's people who have tattooed his name on their arm. That's oh, wow. how into it they are, you know. Really? You really can't, you can't say that about John Williams. As popular as John Williams is, I don't think anyone has tattooed John Williams' name onto their arm. <laughs> I could be wrong. I've got his name tattooed on another part of my body, but I can't talk about it. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> we, we don't need to know about that. Okay. So when you turn around... Um, and, and and you did this. I mean, uh, okay, it's a video game and it's it's horror. I mean, how do you get the concept of what to do? I mean, you had the other guy to go on, but well, yeah. I mean, I you know, the, I because it, it, you know he was so popular with the game. I did I didn't want to make uh, I didn't want to be a completely different direction. But I did make a nod to his his style. You know, mm-hmm. on the first one I did. Then on the second one, I kind of like went off on my own, you know. So I kind of transitioned the audience with me. Right. Um, and then there's going to be another one I hear. I don't know. Not sure if that's top secret or not. But 
I might have heard that. You know? <laughs> well, in doing the music for the video games, there, would they get you to, I imagine there's going to be more films, or would they possibly be getting you to do the films? Uh, well, uh, hopefully. I mean, uh, I mean that, uh, the Silent Hills already sort of, already sort of had the composer that's done the other ones. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, I also did a video game called Dishonored, which was very popular. And um, you know, hopefully if there's a, video, uh, a movie that comes out of it, I'll, I would be involved. One can hope. So where can, if somebody wants to get rich in this business, now, uh, we had Christopher Young on, and I know he's a friend, and we love him. He, God, what a great guy he is. But if you want to get rich in this business, and he's helping people along, he's giving them advice, he's got the school that he was talking about. Do you want to get into, oh, the cops are coming. <laughs> do, do you want to get into movies and TV, or do you want to get into video games? Where is the most money for people like you? Well, it's, it's more a question of where's the work, you know? Mm -hmm. Um... I think you have to be pretty. Uh, you have to be pretty. Um, what's the word? Uh, versatile and and uh, to to make money in this business, and you have to really kind of go where the work is, and you know, real figure out what your own talent is. You know, right. it's, it's not everyone can be John Williams. You have to find you find your own sound, find your own style. You know, that's the. Being authentic is, the, is your strongest selling point. Because um, if you don't, if you have your own sound, then people will want to hire you. For sure. If you sound, if you sound like John Williams, they're going to hire John Williams. Right. <laughs> they don't hire, you know, they're not going to hire you over John Williams. You know, or if you sound like Tommy Newman, they're going to hire Tommy Newman. So really, the most important thing is to is to develop an original sound. But it's always good to. You know, learn what you, what's been to come from, what's been, you know, learn from the masters and then create your own. That's, I know it's very cliche, but it's very true. Right. Well, I got to know because I, I would assume that this is the, the one movie that, that you would be the most proud of because the movie that I love that you scored was Hello? Ticks. Hi, Hello? sorry. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, sorry, my phone just dropped out for a second. Oh, okay, uh, that's all right. Actually, you sound like a hundred times better now. We got a, We got a better connection. Oh. Okay, so I was wondering, because, like, my favorite film that you scored is, believe it or not, Ticks. Oh, really? Well, I actually, uh, that's funny, because um, I did not actually end up scoring Ticks. Oh. Um, I, I was actually uh, removed from that movie, shall we say. Oh, yeah, okay. But that's Okay. I was fine with it. I actually had another film. Let's put it this way. I had another film that I had to do, and I uh, relieved myself, and they were like, that's okay. We're not we're not seeing eye to eye here anyways. So uh, without getting into details, it basically was like an artist dispute to where you guys didn't agree on what to do. Is that what it is? Yeah, I don't know if it got to that point. It was just um, we weren't seeing eye to eye, and I had another film that I wanted to do, and everybody was happy. Hmm. was happy that it went that way. Right. Know? Well, I ask because that's another question I always ask composers are really about how much input they really have because I'm told for the most part that the director says this is what I want and this is the way it's going to be and they usually don't give them that much creative freedom. Uh-huh. Is that pretty much the way that right. it's been with you? or? Wait, say that again, sorry? Is that pretty much the way it's been with you, that they pretty much tell you what they want? Uh, well, sometimes they do and sometimes... Sometimes they have no idea what they want. I'd actually rather have them tell me what they want than have no idea what they want. Yeah. Um, you'd like to have them listen to what ideas you have as well. You want to have it be a collaboration. Um, but, um, you know, it, um, it can go both ways. But I think the worst thing is to have for someone to have no idea what they want but, not, but, but know what they don't want. Right. That is very hard to work with. Definitely. If you know what I mean. Yeah. Well, I know you you did something on one of the Hellraiser films. I know Christopher Young has worked uh, on Hellraiser films. Uh, w was there any input from him on that? Or? Well, uh, no, he didn't give any input, but I did use his theme on, uh, on a couple of scenes, you know, because it is part of the, of the deal. But, uh, no, he was not involved in input at all. Um, that was basically my job. I was hired to do it. And he had nothing to do with me being hired. But I was happy to, you know, to record some of the themes because they're great themes. 
Yeah, for sure. Well, you know, one, one thing about it is, is you do have to worry about that whole typecast thing, but there seems to be a new trend in Hollywood, and I, I think it was because of possibly uh, Bates Motel that I guess they're, they're doing like an Exorcist TV series. So there's the whole new thing now is making horror films that we know and love in a TV series. Has, has anybody ever talked to you about maybe doing any of those? I know Dexter kind of is its own thing, but uh, anybody ever approached you about doing like a TV series of some old classic film that we know? No, not yet, but uh, hey, I'd be open to it. There you go, I think uh, it's perfect. So is there, yeah. is, there, is there a website that, that you're at? I mean, I don't know if composers have websites. Some do and some don't. But do you have a website or a blog spot? Or yeah, I can, I can be reached at, at danlicht.com, D-A-N-L-I-C-H-T.com. You can always send me mail email there through my website. Fantastic. Um, perfect, perfect. We want to uh, encourage everybody. You said that the, uh, the new Dexter soundtrack comes out uh, August 20th, I believe you said, right? Yes, August 20th, yep. Fabulous. We encourage all of our listeners to head out, check that out. Also check out uh, Dan's other work, and, of course, head on over to his website. And, uh, Daniel, I want to thank you so much for joining us on the air, and the best of luck to you. I know that we will probably be seeing you score another hit-making TV show very soon. All right, great. Well, thank you so much for having me on your show. Fantastic. Thank you. Have a wonderful night. Okay, you too. All right, bye-bye.